guys, welcome to Trending, but to you by Airtel. My name is Nancy Isume. It is always a pleasure. When I say that, I mean that. It's always a pleasure to have you join me on your favorite show. My guest is waiting to talk to you, but before we do so, you know now we have to go on the show because when we come back, the show begins. See you soon. Hi guys, welcome back to Trending, brought to you by Airtel. Today on my hot seat, I have the one, the only, Magneto. What up, what up, everyone? It's your boy Magneto, aka Your Money's Mine, aka My Money's Mine. Oh, shit. Oh, the money's your money. How <laughs> yeah. are you doing? Good to I'm see you fine. today. I'm How's fine. How's it going? Good. Oh, I love what you're wearing. I love the, you know, this is from Mendo State, definitely. And yeah, it was made by so. NAC. Yeah. I'm Ishan, actually. So every oh, time yeah. I see this, I always love it. Tell us, what are you wearing? What is the inspiration behind this outfit? Yeah, um, this is a symbol from the Edo people, you know, mm -hmm. and it was made by Nak himself, and Ooh. Nak likes to give me all of this. So okay. when I saw this one, I was like, this is beautiful. Yes, it and is. And I like green. You know I'm Nigeria, mm -hmm. and I support the Super Ego. Oh, <laughs> why do you think about Don't that? Don't me. Very I just nice. like to wear pants, uh, joggers instead yes. of wearing jeans, because okay. it's easy for us here in Nigeria, because it's very hot. I love it, I love it. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about you, Magneto. Um, before we do so, let's talk about the topic of today, which is staying relevant in the Nigeria in the music industry. Um, how has it been for you since your big break in the music industry? Oh, it's been it's been a struggle because I had to start from Abuja. From Abuja I moved to Lagos and it was a while back. Mm -hmm. I dropped a song called Kaka. It became very big but right. I didn't follow up because I had some other things bothering me okay. that I had to tackle. So after okay. that I went out for a while. Everybody was saying, where's Magneto? You know how it is now when they say, mm -hmm. where the artist will sing that song? That yeah. And then I came back with another song, if, uh, As I Get Money, uh, If mm -hmm. I Get Money. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I did the remix, As I Get Money, featuring part of Ranking, and right. it became very mad. Massive, yeah. So I dropped all the singles after that, Loud Girls. Mm -hmm. But it was becoming somehow, because in the music industry, what we do here in Nigeria is just drop singles, drop mm -hmm. EPs. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, we drop another one. Mm -hmm. If it works, we move on with it and start dropping on another one. And it's just stereotype. So I was right. thinking of doing something outside the box. Mm -hmm. So I started a, um, um, a, a rap series mm -hmm. called Relationship Be Like. Mm -hmm. And it's been very tasking because I have to follow up with the story. Right. Uh, there, there needs to be suspense and I need to feature um, some of these big names and okay. stuff like that. So. Okay. I started with Young Sis, we moved to Adams, Don Jazzy, Basket Mount. So it's been major so far, Amazing. so good. Amazing, I yeah. love that. Amazing. Now, why, why do people have to, like, why do musical artists have to come down to Lagos every time? I hear it all the time. I hear, oh, I was in Mori, I was in Kaduna, I was in Joss, and then the music hit, and then I came to Lagos. Yeah, Lagos, you know, it's not only Lagos. Even in uh, Nigeria, it's not as big as the U.S. market. I would okay. compare them. Cause okay. In Nigeria here, you have to be close to the market, you have to be close to the media. For me to have interviews with you, mm. I have to be here in Lagos, right, if not, right. it won't happen. Mm. So yeah, you have point. to be close to the market, close to the media, so that the world will see you in diaspora. That everybody will get to relate with you. Mm -hmm. The market, you get to meet up with people that would give you the money, because we all have to buy the bins, pay the house rent, and all those stuff. So but if you're in Enugu... You want to buy bins? Or, I already have. Okay. <laughs> what color of pants did you use? Purple. <laughs> if you saw that nigga in one purple pants, <laughs> and things are not going well for you, call his phone though. No. I'm very good though. I've been, do you know, for, I've been, I drove Benz six years ago. <laughs> there was no pants to in Benz. So, right, so you can't so, uh, so you can't look okay. at me and say, oh, it's driving Benz now and our pants. If I like, I sell all the Benz and start driving only Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but how has it been for you? I mean, you moved all the way from Joss? No, from, from Abuja. You were never in Joss? No, I graduated from University of Joss. Okay. That was where I schooled. Okay. And so that was that one took me, that was like six years of my life okay. I was there. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in Abuja, they gave birth to me in Abuja mm. and everything. Mm. But I had to school in University of Joss, that was where I attended my university. Okay. And I was there for like six years and after uni, I had to move back to Abuja again. I started a career. But Abuja was just too small for what I wanted to show to the do, world. Right. Mm. So I had to move to Lagos. To Lagos. That was long ago. Okay, uh, okay. But if you didn't do music, what would it be? What would you do? I would have been in the military because I'm from a military family. Oh, for real? Uh, yeah. Tell us about that. 
My uncle is a soldier. My dad is a police, retired police officer. Ah. All this. So they can't even mess with you. No, I have. Ah, ah. I have all of the. So uh, what techniques. happens? What, what happens when they, they stop you? All the sass people they stop you on the road for riding a Benz and like having this fancy hair. What what do you what do you do? What do you say to them? I just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. You can't find anything on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Know, you don't even call someone and be like, "Just I, hold on." Since since I, since they give birth to me up yeah. until now, I've never called my dad. Wow. To tell him that, hey, see one policeman is trying to harass me now. Never. Not even my, your I see uncle. my cousins calling. Hello. No, 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 of course. No, never, Not even I've your never, uncle who's a soldier. No. I've ah, never, I've never. So, can you can we switch families? No. Because every day me, I'll just be calling. I'll be like, "Hello, daddy." No, I grew up morning. having all. I know police people, but I know what they discuss. I know what they talk about. Mm. So it's easy for me to have a conversation, uh, a conversation with mm. a police officer. Mm. If I sit down with them, I know what I'm about to tell them. I know what I know the relationship. Right. So I can tell them how far. When is your posting coming out? When I okay. if you tell the policeman, they'll transfer it to me. Do grip like. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But well, that's good to know that if you were not doing music, you do. What did yeah. you study in school, though? Business management. Okay, so you don't think you, you did you? Are you one of those people who studied it just for the sake? No, of... No, I did it for my parents. Right. Just to have that. Degree. Right. You don't see yourself going into business anytime soon. No, but I'm doing business already. I'm multiplying my money. Okay. So business is all about making one for making four eighteen. Where are you from? I'm from Benue State. Okay. You don't have a tribe. Two faces are ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> who asked you? <laughs> All I said is, where are you from? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but tell us about the structure of the music industry. You're talking about, you know, multiplying and, you know, already doing business somehow in the music. But tell us about the financial structure. What do you think about it? Uh, um, now, I think there's a rapid growth. Okay. Because back in the days, we don't see artists living mm. the lavish life mm. that these artists are living now. Mm. I won't say every artist is a fraud star because... Mm legitimately these artists make so much money right you understand so apart from the downloads we get gigs every weekend mm. you see people calling from worry but saying no oh, we need this person and they call a whooping song and you be like oh just to perform three four songs mm. they are beginning to appreciate these musicians very well right. the musicians are being seen as idols now mm. and they pay them the legitimate money they deserve you right. get what i'm saying right. So, right. but back then they don't show that respect and love mm. for mm. them mm. i don't know about now I see artists multiplying their money and growing from one step to the other. Do your family, do they accept you as the musician? No, well, it was a struggle okay. from the beginning, but now my mom is a very big fan. Right. How about yeah. your dad? My dad has been a fan from day one, but my mom oh. used to report to their grandparents and say, no, he can't, <laughs> because I'm from a Muslim family. I okay. know how difficult it is for okay. all of this. You see, girls, oh, yeah, Muslim. No yeah. Okay, okay. My name is Mohammed Usman Adam. Ooh, wow, you are... Definitely Muslim. <laughs> like deep, deep, deep. <laughs> like inside. Wow, whoa. Okay, okay, amazing. Good so, to know. Um, you seem to, you know, your, your style of music is a little comical. You yeah. like to put it, comedy into it. You're also a funny person, me, from the interview so far. But why did you choose to infuse it in your music? Uh, back then, when I started all of this, I started with the hardcore rap. I wanted to be like Nas. I wanted to be like Jay-Z. Mm. I wanted to be like um, Dr. Dre mm -hmm. and them Eminem. So I was always rapping, yo, welcome to breaking the door, coming there. But it didn't really work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would work you. I come yeah. through breaking the door. <laughs> so I did loads of that. I recorded plenty of songs. I'll wake up and be like, let's vibe, man. Yo, we yeah, bro. It never worked. So the one door. day I sat down, I was thinking about it. I said, okay, finally in the end. I'm getting gray hair. Mm -hmm. We need to make this money, man. Right. So I decided now, who am I making this music for? It's mm -hmm. people here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I need to bring in Nigerian language, Nigerian slang. So mm -hmm. that was when I started. Now, which kind of cacao you never see? And then, mm -hmm. then and that became my biggest song. Everyone mm -hmm. was like, ah, this is my little guy. Man. Ah, like, ah, so they like me like this. Mm -hmm. Then I did, if I get money, mm -hmm. uh, since then, I'm like, speak pigeon anywhere. Yeah. It's just because of you that I'm just saying all of this. No, no, I say, how far? What's going to the person? <laughs> but how, what, at what age did you, did you have your hit music? What age was that? Uh, I can't remember how old I was, but mm. that was like um, five years ago. How old were you then, five years ago? 
I was like around 73. Have you ever seen a Nigeria saying his age like that? Of course. Yeah, they yeah. say their age every time. Yeah. <laughs> I say my age all the time. Like it's nothing. Uh, no, yeah. you. Are, are you now? No, it's not about it. I'd like to know because I feel like it's inspiring because for you to hold on. And like you. you said, you had gray hair. See, and then, you know, before the music hits. But you have to inspire those who are watching at home yeah, to just know that, you know. I was about mid-twenties. Uh uh, you were young now. No, but when you see grey, you're not young anymore. <laughs> then, no matter the age, I mean. No matter the age, but you just okay. find grey around you. Just know that you need to set your life straight. Right. If you're dating a girl, hmm, marry her. Okay. She cook a goosey, say, wow, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to start checkmating everything you're doing. You wow. get what I'm saying? Okay. So I had to look into my career very well. And I said, okay, to get these people to listen to me, mm -hmm. I have to relate with them. Mm -hmm. And I started relating with them so far, so good. I'm doing very well. Amazing. That's good yeah. to know. How do you plan to stay relevant for a long time? By doing exactly what I'm doing now. <laughs> by doing the, the relationship be like. Right. I have a series called Relationship Be Like mm, on Instagram. Mm, mm. We're on episode 10 now on YouTube. Wow. Why we're on like episode 20 on Instagram because mm. we're breaking into two. Because mm. now everyone is following. Back in the days in my Instagram, I would drop a picture <laughs> or a video. I'll get like 2,000 views and like 18 comments. Mm. But now we're getting thousands of comments. Amazing. People are saying... Magneto is amazing, this guy. And yeah. now, the kind of story that I'm doing, if I check on Instagram now, I'm seeing too many people doing it because mm. they're now emulating exactly what Magneto is in. That's, it's this show mm. that Magneto has set a standard mm. and people are following. That's good so know. now I'm breaking out of that one. I'm starting my police story. Okay. I have people like RMD, they're going to rap. I have people like Ramsey Noah. For rap, real? Sure. That's mad. So, 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 I'm so surprised that you're not following on my Instagram. The story will drive you crazy. For real? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're having a private conversation. <laughs> like, you have the audience. Yeah, well, okay, so, that's good to know, though. So we're working. We're okay. Working. Yeah. I, I would follow that up. I should, totally. Yeah. What is your take on I mean, you spoke about people, comments, and, you know, people showing you love. But what is your take on artists who assault social media bullies? I mean, assault, you know, well, cost back. <laughs> On Instagram and then take it to life. Me, I don't have a problem with it. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Yeah, but, some, um, some, but some of these guys yeah. are social bullies. So some of these social bullies are very wicked. Mm. They'll tell you stuff to your face, exactly what you know you're feeling. Mm. They'll tell it to you. Mm. And they'll look at you and say, see your head is bending to the left. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that and your head is bending to the left. You're sleeping and say, ah, this is my head. You'll never go to the right. Try to <laughs> And they're telling you your head always on the left. Your left <laughs> head. Get away from there. <laughs> As a distance at times, it affects these people. These people right. you're seeing every time wearing Gucci, standing <laughs> and say, hey, hey, when they go back home, they sit down, drink tea, and they think about their lives. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you're telling themselves you have to be you have to be careful. Well, so what do you because think people should take? What should artists, what kind of measures should they take? You for you to be a public figure, you yeah. should expect so many things. Yeah. All these things are things that are going to come with being popular. Mm, mm. So when you see them, ignore them. Mm. I delete comments on my page. Right. Like when somebody saying, why didn't you bring this person and I tell the camera guy to stay on top of, you are directing it in your house. I'll just delete it because at times yeah. they don't even know what we've gone through yeah, to so pull cheap. out that little that we've mm -hmm, put on mm -hmm, social media. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? So yeah. just ignore all these people. You don't need to munch or say okay i'm going to get this guy and teach him i say just forget because forget. People, your enemies those people that say negative stuff about you when you channel your energy into positivity they would all come back and become fans mm, amazing so good to know what should we expect from you what's popping what's going on what you're working on i have attention gang song dropping me and my okay. team Ooh. we have um, Jewies, Prophetic, Sophile, Magneto. Did you say Ketension? No, no, no. What is tension it? Gang. Oh, okay. About tension, electricity everywhere in the music Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. shit. So, that one is dropping. Okay. But I have another single that I'm dropping. It's titled, If To Say I Be Girl, and featuring Files the Bad Guy. Mm. This comic is interesting. Mm. You will love it. Amazing. When you listen to it, you'll be all the things I wish to do if I were a girl, a fine girl like you. Ooh, you better tell, yeah, them. <laughs> tell them. Like you need to listen to that song. I say I so many stuff that you're thinking. Ah, yeah. amazing! <laughs> we look forward to this amazing jam dropping very soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what date? Do you have an exact day yet? No, I don't know. I do. I you know, any day where you just, just wake up. up in the morning. I say, you don't upload them. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> good to go. So <laughs> good to know. Song. We look forward to it. Yeah. All right, guys. Enjoy the video of the day. We will be right back. to 
Since she promised she could they let me know. Now she don't they walk out and she know they let me know. Let me know. Let, let, let me know. Now she don't they walk out and she know they let me know. Baza, you be the man. Make sure say you sue her. She never see money in her poverty, they do her. In that corner, Mr. Faust, son of the Zua. Hey, you been sad. I made this one through her. Kiramana Malame Suzo Suman Adua. When I buy my Benz, I buy a one Akura. You be know her before now, she did drive Gura Gura. Faust, tell me what's up. Zamu Bata Alura. Eh? Whoa, oh, Mr. Magneto. This one be serious matter where you bring so. I will advise you according to verse 2 of our constitution that it is a bad news. Divorce is a very delicate case. If you don't care, you may never escape. In the first place, I'm on the show check say, because our chambers don't collect 10 k Money is not the issue, let me put her on the run. I get friends from China, constricts and young beyond. I don't love her anymore, she know they turn me on. This relationship is just on your own. We, we, we can start in the court of appeal. I will tell the chief judge you should cut us a deal. He will sentence her to jail. We Without the bill, and I have another plan if that one should fail. Hi guys, welcome back to Trending Road to You by Airtel. I still have Magneto on my hot seat and we're about to play some games. Are you ready? I'm ready. First off, it's a fast fire question segment. I get to ask you a couple questions about yourself and you answer it like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Under 60 seconds. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Alright, time starts now. What was your first track recorded? 2001. What was what was the name of the track? Telling me, telling me, ting ting. <laughs> ah, my God, mainland or island? Island. <laughs> telling me, telling me, ting ting. <laughs> Favorite color? Purple. Favorite artist of all time? Bob Marley. Favorite football club? Madrid. Favorite African soup? Egusi. Can you be a male stripper for a million dollars? Never. <laughs> <laughs> a million dollars? Yes. yes very well. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your celebrity crush? Ah. Yankee in Nigeria. Everywhere. Beyonce. Ooh, okay. Uh, when was your first kiss? Uh, 1999. <laughs> you will not tell us your age, this guy. <laughs> you will not tell us that. Were you a teenager? Yeah, I okay. was. Okay, what will you never do? Uh, what will I never do? I will never kill for money. Hey, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> I will never kill for money. Okay, well, it's good to know. I, I saw that your favorite color was purple, like the purple pants. <laughs> And then your favorite comes to a goosey. So no, any baby good. that cooks a goosey for you now, is, is, that's my wife. Yeah, you say marry her. I have a friend that you say, oh, she bought all this food. She bought it in the house. If a girl should use her money to buy Maria. Marry her. Marry, her. <laughs> she? marry all the girls in town. <laughs> <laughs> so good to know. We're going to move on now to the tribe. What happens? I get to ask you a couple of social media abbreviations. You just give me a few minutes. That's all. Very simple. Uh, I know I'll never get them. You might. Know. You just might. Should we start? FB is Facebook. <laughs> That's just, I don't want to see Oh yeah, uh, let's, let's, let's try the first one, which is SMH. Shaking my head. There you go. Finally. This hey. is the only one I do. No, no, no. You see <laughs> TMI. TMI. Mm. Should I give you a clue? Yeah. So it's like someone is telling you a story and they start telling you too many things and you're like, ah, TMI, TMI, no, 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 no. That's, that's TMI. Uh, that's too much. Yeah, <laughs> too much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, I, I. Too much information. There you go! <laughs> okay. W-Y-D. W-Y-D. I know that stuff. Oh, W I D Y U. Oh my God! <laughs> just tell me, please. I just like to crack my. Do you book. want me to give you a clue? Just give you a clue. Okay, so W I D is life. Come, let me think. Ah, uh, you just hit someone up and you're like, ah, my guy, why are you at W Y D? Like, ah, uh, kilo shell now. You did? No, it's English. It's it's W Y D. It's it's not. Why? Uh, it's like a uh, kilo shell now. Uh uh-uh, uh, W Y D now. What you do? Kilo pop. There you. <laughs> What you doing? There you yeah. go. There you go. Oh, okay. I, did. I never knew I was this brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? All right, last oh. one. Um, <laughs> Q O T D. Q O T. Just don't. Let's forget. <laughs> <They will. laughs> Just tell me this one. I'll manage. <laughs> I should give you a clue. Q O. Quote of the day. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah. You had to breathe. <laughs> it was ah, correct. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my God. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> genius. <laughs> you going to be genius now. We well, did very well. That was really yeah. good. All right, guys. Thank we're going to go on another break. And when we come back, Magneto will be reading some nasty comments. Don't go anywhere. Mm. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Trending. Brought to you by Airtel. It's that time of the show. Why I get to give you this, please read and respond the best way you can. Nasty comments. Okay. I don't understand if he is a comedian or an artist. <laughs> he seems confused. <laughs> hmm. He has a dead sense of Dressing. Wow. Me fresh out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that guy doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> no, but when you read all this stuff, you still go to that page, check out the person. You see the person wearing one calf down with one of the and you're like, what is wrong with this guy? Tell me about uh, it. No, I've seen it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to know. Thank you very much for yeah. sharing, and thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you very much. You were it's amazing. Nice. Yeah. And now I would believe you. Anytime you crack, you see anything funny in your music, I think I'd laugh a little more because <laughs> I've got to meet the real man too, and you are hilarious. Ah, oh, well thank you very much. I'm blushing. <laughs> Five entrepreneurs. At number five, we have Carlos Slim Halu. Carlos Slim Halu is Mexico's richest man. He and his family control American Mobile, Latin America's biggest mobile telecommunications firm. He also owns a stake in Mexican construction, consumer goods, mining, and real estate, as well as 17% of the New York Times. His estimated net worth is $64 billion. At number four, we have Bernard Hanolt. Hanolt is the wealthiest European on the list. The Frenchman oversees an empire of more than 60 brands, including Louis Vuitton and Sephora. He has a net worth of $76 billion. At number three, Warren Buffett. The Berkshire Hathaway chief executive, known as the Oracle of Armaga, now in his ninth decade, is one of the most successful investors of all time. Like Gates, he had pledged to give away more than 99% of his fortune to charity. Warren Buffett has an estimated net worth of $82.5 billion. And at number two, there's Bill Gates. Bill Gates still remains a permanent fixture at the top of Forbes' list for the past 20 years. The Microsoft founder has sold or given away much of his stake in the company. He owns just 1% of Microsoft and now focuses predominantly on his philanthropic work. Gates amasses a net worth of $96.5 billion. And finally, at number one, there's Jeff Bezos. Amazon's founder and chief executive Jeff Bezos still retained the top spot as the richest person on earth. He still earns 16% of the e-commerce Colossus, which has seen its share price rise nearly 500% in the past five years. According to Forbes, he is now worth an estimated $131 billion. And that's it on the Top 5 Entrepreneur. Alrighty guys, we've gotten to that time of the show where I got to close the curtains and call it a day. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Thank you for sticking with my guests and I. I had Magneto on my hot seat. Of course, you know you can join the conversation. Follow us on Twitter at TV and on Instagram at Official Heap TV. You can also follow me on Instagram if you wish at Nancy Isime Official. Until I see your pretty faces next time, do not forget that I love you, but God loves you more. Goodbye.